Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's Semi Original Guy, aka Mr. Cannon from Advanced Wars by Web, bringing you another live league game of the day. Today, we are on Data Renaissance. This is a triple base airport map with some comm towers in the corner. Semi contested comm towers. You know, they can be flipped with the right moves. All right, today we have Ben, Joey, and myself, because I have re entered the live league and have been playing some games. So you better watch out. Talking to you right there. Anyways, so we have Max and we have Olaf today on this map. So Max as a day-to-day -day ability will get plus 20% firepower to his direct combat units, but he will lose one range on all of his indirect units plus minus 10% firepower. Plus minus minus. Yes. Alright. Um, in addition to that, he does have access to his co-power, Max Force, which will increase his movement by one and further increase that firepower bonus for those direct combat units, and Max Blast, which will increase the firepower further yet again, and also increase his movement by two for all those direct combat units, so it can be very, very effective in wall breaking. Hmm, yes, indeed. Indeed, Max is probably the favorite pick for this map in DDO. Now, I myself have decided to play as Olaf today, because I thought Olaf was a pretty good choice um, overall. So Olaf, he has no data abilities, except for the fact that he does not uh, take any penalty in snow. His normal co-power, Blizzard, will make it snow. His super co-power will do 2 damage globally and make it snow. So Olaf, pretty basic CO, but highly effective when it comes to combat in the long run. He's a, he's a lay in wait kind of CO, folks. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty cool map. I played on this map a couple times. Normally, I do actually go max whenever I have the chance on this map, but I was feeling Olaf. So we're going to see how it went, folks. We're going to see how it went against old Banjoey. So, on the first few days, we have our standard infantry builds, because you got to get the infantry on the field, folks. It is the number one priority in Advanced Wars by web. Alrighty, folks, so we're just going to do a little minor change. We are going to make sure that Banjo is facing the other direction so that our units are looking at each other. Now, I am a big fan of Acid Rain. That is usually the army that I go with. So, yeah. It's good stuff. I don't know if Banjo is really a... Uh, what is that army? Teal Galaxy or Teal something? Teal Galaxy? I don't know if he's a Teal Galaxy guy, but he went with Teal today, so it's pretty cool stuff, folks. Pretty cool stuff. Alright, so I open up a tank over here on day five, and I believe the Banjo is also going to be going tank here. Cool, cool, cool. Got the tanks rolling. So I went tank, um, and I, I base skipped because I kind of forgot how much money I had. <laughs> so um, either way, I did feel like I needed to get the tanks out. Um, because you don't want Max to have too many tanks. Although, you could go artillery against Max, you know, if you can get the setup right. But a lot of the time, I lose this comm tower up here, so I was kind of like, I don't really want to lose the comm tower today, so I'll get, a, I'll get a tank on the field and I'll see how it goes. Alright, so build my second tank. Just leave this tank sitting here because this guy is just sort of out of range here, which I thought was okay, you know. It's, it's, he's over there, it's like he can't hurt me. Um, technically, he could go in here, and then if I attacked him... Uh, well, then I would end up just losing my tank because this guy would come in and this guy would come in right afterwards and be able to destroy it. But then I'd have this tank over here, so it would start a non-stop tank war, which in the long run Max would have won because he's got that increased firepower bonus. And with the comm tower, Max is going to have 130% firepower on those direct combat units. So you do got to keep that in mind, folks. Um, so Banjo actually base skipped here as well, which I kind of was thinking like, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> this, is, this is nice. He's going to base skip too, so it makes me feel better. Now, did he have the funds? Nah, he didn't have the funds. But he did a big capture this turn, bringing his funds all the way up to, or properties all the way up to 14,000. So he's got that money. He's got that money rolling in. I'm only sitting at 13,000, so you know his capture chain is definitely a lot better than mine at the moment. But I do manage to get two tanks and an infantry out this turn. So I'm feeling okay about that. And with 14,000, he could go double tank, but he'd have to base skip an infantry. Or the other option is at this point, when you have the 14,000, you know... Uh, you could go Battlecopter also, right? Battlecopter is definitely a viable strategy at this point. So, air units are very good, as you guys can see here. 
banjo he did go with the air unit, which is going to put a lot of pressure over here on this corner. Uh, considering the amount of units over here, and these tanks can easily shift over here. So, wasn't really feeling too hot about that. I was trying to figure out what the heck I should do at this point, you know, because I got this chunk of army over here. I'm kind of blocked in. I can't really contend with the max at the moment, right? So, I think what we decide to do is we decide to kind of shift up north a little bit, bring one tank up north going for my neutral property, and then I send everything else down south. Build my anti-air to hopefully counter that battle copter and bring just enough forces over here to sort of ward them off. Now, thinking about it, you know, Maybe if he sends his tank up here, I might be able to push it, so we'll see. We'll see what happens, folks. But he does get another property, another two properties, and has acquired his comp tower. So he's sitting at 18,000 funds per turn right now, which is a very large amount of funds. Um, not really the necessarily the place that you want Max to be in, but the dreaded territory for Max whenever you're fighting him is 21,000 funds. When it is triple base, you do not want Max to get to 21,000 funds. Because that is just a terrible time for you folks. You do not want that to happen. So we do go double uh, anti-air. Maybe that's a little overkill. But I feel like he's going to send one up here. And he's going to send one down here. So you got to have one on each front. The battle copter could potentially counter that. But I don't know. You know, I don't know. It is what it is, folks. We go double anti-air. Because I like anti-air. I think they're cool. I think they kind of look like bugs. So they're pretty, they're pretty neat. All right, so he brings the vast majority of forces up north here, um, basically forcing a fight up here, which is pretty dangerous. So um, with this, I am forced to kind of retreat here. I mean, there's not really going to be too many options to push in, especially with the battle copter. This is like five vehicles up here uh, versus one vehicle and some infantry. So I mean, that's not really going to be winnable in the long run unless I shift a bunch of guys up there. So that is... Hopefully what the plan is going to be over here on day 10 as we can see that I shift a few infantry and I go in for an attack And I go in for this attack so I was thinking To myself it's like okay I could bring a bunch of guys up here and then if he attacks and I might be able to counter him And then hopefully maybe win in the long run because if he misplays his battle copters and I play my anti-air right he could um, I could snipe out two battle copters and if I did snipe out two battle copters here then that would be incredibly good We'll see. We'll see if Banjoey misplays the the Battlecopters or not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He's a very, very good player. Banjoey is, um, I think he's around like 1,400-ish in the Global League. So, you know, he's got a lot of skills, and I wouldn't say that he makes too many mistakes. So... Yeah, so this is like, I probably should have brought these guys up a little bit more. Sort of in hindsight here. Because I don't really cover it all too well, but I got enough around here that I should be able to potentially cover it, depending on what happens. But he did send a Battlecopter all the way up here, so I should have brought this guy up a little bit more so that it would cover this property here. Uh, just lively things folks sometimes you uh, you don't see things and you just you goof you goof it up folks That is what happens sometimes in the lively, but it's definitely far from over There is still plenty of units on the map at the moment. So day 11 plops in 19,000 funds and Max built three tanks this turn see this is why you don't want max to get 21,000 funds because he can reliably Almost every single turn, pump out three tanks, and if you're dealing with three tanks of max every single turn, you're gonna have a bad time, folks. You're gonna have a bad time. All right, so uh, what are the options here? You know, we could potentially go up with tank after eliminating this infantry and take out one tank here. We could potentially hit another tank, but now we're in a situation where he's got multiple battle copters, and he will still have two tanks plus three tanks coming in right afterwards so if I misplay this turn it's gonna be very very bad very bad indeed so yeah so I just kind of shift up here which I think is probably a mistake you know this is probably a mistake I think at this point we should have actually taken the two engagements because I end up losing a tank here which kind of sucks he's gonna be able to bring his tank back here or here or even on the HQ and heal up his injured tank. 
right? And then I'm just down a tank because of that. So that's not really a good situation. That's not the place where you want to be. You know, you want to be in a situation where you just took out a tank, you know, because that's that's where the dopamine lives. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, um, I'm kind of stuck in this unfortunate situation. I probably, you know, in hindsight, hindsight, I probably should have brought these guys up. Maybe if I had infantry coverage up here, I might have. I think that was probably the thought. It's like, okay, I don't have the infantry coverage up here, so I can't wall myself off, so I can't effectively go in and attack. Right? Um, what I really should do, though, is I should go in and take this attack against this tank, because I think that would be pretty good. But I think one of the things I'm thinking is if he gets co power, which is very likely. Well, not very likely, but if he does get co-power somehow, because he's a crafty guy, you know, he might be able to get it. I don't think I go in for that attack, but hindsight, looking at this one right here, I think this would be a really good attack. But, you know, I got Winter Fury, you know, I got Winter Fury, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, folks, and it's gonna be good. So Banjo does not go in and attack, he just repositions himself, builds a freaky reeky, and it is on the field now. Now, did I actually have an attack for that? Ah, that's what it was. Okay, I didn't even have that attack. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, hindsight, folks. Okay, I go in for a very, very risky attack here. So, I go in for a double attack. And then I bring the rest of my units up here. So, my thought here is maybe, you know, he might be forced to come in with a battle copter. And a tank and something to take this out right so he can effectively take out the battle copter and he can get a tank strike on here but I'm hoping I'm hoping that he doesn't really attack any further than that because if he just pushes up with like two units I can counter and I can get a really really good position here that's my thought but he goes in with the old double sack and does not finish off the battle copter thankfully but he hits a critical hit onto the anti-air, taking it all the way down to two, and then finishes off with the battle copter, which is very unfortunate, very unfortunate indeed. And then he goes in with an additional attack, taking out multiple units, and securing a nice, huge defensive line. Ouch. Very, very, ouch. Ouch. All right, so what do we have as a counter here? You know, we do potentially have an anti-air hit here. Um, if we don't go for the anti-air hit, we do have a two-tank and then a two-tank hit on this one. But that would leave us very, very vulnerable. So, this is what I decide to do. I move in with the battle copter. Or not battle copter, with the anti-air. I take the tank strike, take another tank strike. And then I'm thinking to myself, it's like, yeah, I can clear this guy and, like, make a wall, right? Right? No, I move in with the tank. I don't know what I was thinking with the tank move right there. That was kind of kind of silly, to be completely honest. It was like very, very silly. <laughs> very silly. I should have just moved in with the infantry, I think. I mean, if anything. I think I was trying to just wall it off here. But, um, very silly move, unfortunately. You know, We all do it in Live League, folks. But this is the thing that got me very interested in this game because like there's not really too much potential to break yes obviously max with co-power would be able to do like a lot of damage but i'm not sure if it would be able to completely one shot tanks on like planes or anything right it might be able to do a big attack on the infantry so there definitely is break potential here but banjoey he goes in for this really really clever move so he does a break or he does like a double sacrifice here. Like, look at this, right? He goes in for this attack first, which is fantastic because he's trying to get charge right now, which is great. And then he goes for the sack on the infantry, he goes for the sack on the weakened tank, and he goes for a sack on that tank. Like, perfectly calculated. Like, honestly, like, it's a beautiful work of art right there. And then he goes for the super co power, max blast. And then these guys, all the way in the background, are able to get plus two movement and just completely move in and just completely decimate my entire front line. And I was feeling incredibly sad at this point. I was feeling 100% super sad <laughs> when I saw this attack coming. I was just like, oh, oh no, 
Oh no. Oh, Sammy, you done mucked it up, buddy. You done mucked it up. But we got Winter Fury, folks. So we popped the Winter Fury. Do that two damage globally. Everything is white. Everything is Christmas. And we go in and we get an attack on this little guy right here. And we go in for an attack on the anti-air. And then we go in and we attempt to clear the tank right there. Fail with our own tank. Move in. Clear it with the infantry. And we attempt to try to wall it off. And we go to destroy a few more infantry. I probably could have just kept this guy on the mountain. Not sure what I was thinking there. But I don't know. <laughs> we did kill a tank down here. So I was feeling okay about that. So I mean we did do quite a bit of damage that turn. We did about 50,000 value worth of damage. But the problem is, Spanjoy just has a lot of presence here. So he can potentially just continue the attack, and it would be perfectly fine. But, Spanjoy, he's a clever guy. He's a clever fella. So he doesn't go in and attack during Winter Fury, because that would be silly. Why would you attack into that? That's a losing fight. So he brings his units back, and now... Once again, he has a commanding lead when it comes to the unit count. And then I'm just kind of stuck in this situation where I'm trapped in a corner and I can't really get out. So I just kind of wall myself off. And then Banjo comes in here, takes out all the infantry that I had out of position. Boom, 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 boom. Look at that destruction. Ugh. Like I said, folks, it's honestly a work of art. Builds another battle club that builds another tank, and now he's just got such a massive position here. It's like, what can you do? You know, what can you do? You just you just can't do anything. It's nothing you can do at this point. You might as well just yeet your way out, build a rocket, and call it a day, folks. That was brutal. Just absolutely brutal. Banjoey, what a player. Just absolutely spotted every single tiny thing that you could do and just like exploit it and it was beautiful We had a good little chat after the game and he was saying that possibly one of the things that we could have did um, Actually Was this turn right here? He said that there was a possibility for a wall break You know bringing the anti-air over here and busting through and being able to do lots of damage against these tanks over here um, But in the long run, I don't think that it really would have made much of a difference. I think at this point Banjoy just had such a good presence over here that he was able to just push in and just eliminate it. But the other thing is when you're fighting on this map, um, one thing that you should try to do is you should try to avoid fighting in the corners because the corners are not really necessarily the place where you want to fight. Especially if you're playing as Olaf. One of the best things you can do is play as Olaf is to bring all your units into the center. Like capture the corners and then try to get into the center and force the fight over here. Because if you fight in the center, that's where you are going to have the highest odds of victory instead of fighting these little proxy battles against a max. So, definitely some food for thought, but I had a great time playing this game, and I definitely learned a thing or two about um, leaving myself vulnerable to massive max blast wall breaks. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one today. I definitely had a good time playing it, and like I said, I am back in the live league, so... If you happen to be paired up against me, well, you know, I might offer you a fish sandwich and ask you to resign. So we'll see how it goes. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, consider leaving a like, a comment, or subscribe. I will see you all in the next one. Take care of yourselves, and bye-bye for now.